Our presenter today is Tom Hart, the Director of Business Development at Net Profit Explosion. Tom successfully opened, operated and sold his personal training, yoga and spin studios in New Zealand, but is now based in Australia. So without any further ado, over to you Tom. Yeah, thanks very much Tom and um, welcome to everybody who is here on the webinar. Um, as uh, Tom mentioned, I'm from Net Profit Explosion uh, and I work for Net Profit Explosion as the Asia Pacific Regional Coaching Manager, providing coaching to uh, fitness professionals just like yourselves uh, and also Director of Business Development. So today I'm presenting uh, to you guys the seven and a half steps to doubling your fitness business. So uh, let's sort of get into it. First, I just want to tell you a little bit more uh, about me and who I am. So uh, as Tom mentioned, um, I'm a Kiwi, but please don't hold that against me. I live in Australia now. I have officially turned to the dark side, so I am now one of you. Um, I really started in the fitness industry uh, really as a wrestler. Um, when I was very young, about five, I started wrestling. My father was the uh, New Zealand uh, wrestling manager um, and used to take the wrestling team to the Olympics and Commonwealth Games, etc. So uh, my, I guess, um, my start in the fitness industry really was on the wrestling mat um, and from there obviously really got into um, sport, fitness, um, health, nutrition and all, the, all those other pieces as well. So um, from there I finally got myself qualified and became a personal trainer and I've held many different positions uh, in the fitness industry uh, from personal trainer into PT manager, uh, I've worked as a sales manager. Uh, when I moved to Australia, started working as a general manager here for a, a large format um, box gym, uh, looking after 17 different locations throughout Australia. And then, as Tom mentioned, I've also been a, a gym owner uh, as well. So in New Zealand, I had a, a gym, a PT studio, and actually two group fitness studios, um, which uh, were called VIP Fitness uh, and Well and Strong. So really, when it comes to the fitness industry, I've, I've just about worked every job you can think of, uh, and that's really resulted in, in quite a lot, of, a lot of knowledge uh, of the industry and best practice, um, which has obviously brought me now to working for MPE uh, as a business coach, really working with entrepreneurs, um, startup business owners and personal trainers uh, who are really looking to get ahead and push their, their fitness business forward. So uh, that's a bit of a snapshot of me and where I'm at now and, and what brings me to hosting this webinar today. A little bit about MPE before we uh, before we move forward with the, the bulk of the content. So um, MPE is really the only global fitness community that empowers entrepreneurs at every stage of business growth and development. And I'll go through the stages um, that we uh, that we mentioned very soon. Um, but really, we do work uh, really from someone just entering the fitness industry right up to you know franchise owners or fitness business owners that help multiple sites. Um, so really we do cover all the bases with what we do and how we work with our clients. Um, we've been around for nearly 10 years. In fact, uh, this is a slightly old deck because we've just had our 10 year uh, anniversary. So we've been around for just over 10 years. Uh, and during that time we've worked with over 22,000 clients, um, people just like yourselves uh, across 94 different countries. So um, we do really have quite a far reach. Um, today we have three offices, uh, one in the USA in Orlando. Uh, we have one in London in the UK and I'm coming to you from our Australian office uh, which is based here in Sydney and now globally we have over 60 staff uh, made up of you know obviously management team marketing sales right up to coaches uh, globally across the board so um, you can see there we're pretty fancy with won, won a few awards throughout our time as well um, we've been featured six times on the M500 fastest growing uh, business list in the US um, and uh, you know the National Business Awards in the UK too so still looking to, to nab one here in Australia but we're hoping that's not going to be too far away so as I mentioned, um, really we, we cover uh, all the bases with our clients and, and you know, over the last sort of 10 years working with thousands of personal trainers, coaches, facility owners and entrepreneurs uh, all around the world, we've been able to identify um, that there's really six kind of key stages in business and we've defined those key stages of growth and development along with the critical success, success factors required at each stage in order to grow to the next level. Um, so we obviously work with clients right at the front here in the green stage, stage one, um, generally just starting out in the industry. Uh, revenue is usually under 1500 per month. Uh, we start to look at the success factors required in order to move on to stage two around mindset, vision and community. Um, again, as you see the stage is progressing, we have our stage two, so generally people that uh, are qualified and now want to start working for themselves, uh, right up to stage three, so uh, clients of ours that are ready to open their own business. And again, we move forward to stage four and five, so um, committed to long-term success, perhaps expanding into multiple locations, um, perhaps franchising their business, etc. So um, I'm sure many 
of you on this call can kind of identify uh, what stage you would consider yourself to be in and um, really there's no right or wrong stage to be in right now, everyone's at different stages in their business and in their careers, um, but generally we certainly have uh, an option to sue everyone and, and we try and tailor our coaching to everybody no matter where they're at in business and where they're at in their career. Um, so that's a little bit about the stages. So what are we covering today um, specifically? Well first we're going to cover why most fitness professionals struggle with selling and how the skill is vital to your success. So we're really going to attack some pieces around selling mindset and really getting the most out of your sales process. We're going to cover how to price and package your services to get better results and stabilize your income. Super important. We've got to make sure that um, we've got our, our prices, packaging and margins exactly where they need to be in order to really get that long term business success by setting it up right the first time. And we're going to introduce you guys to a system for converting 9 out of 10 prospects into clients. So we're really going to nail down on the sales process throughout this webinar. First attacking the mindset and then going through a systemized step-by-step -step process to really ensure that you're giving yourself and your clients the best chance of achieving your personal and professional goals. So there's a bit of a rundown as to what we're going to crack into. Uh, if that sounds good to you, raise your hand. All right, looks like we're on to a winner. Good, got lots of hands raised there. Awesome, well, I shall continue on and let's get into the bulk of it. So first I really want to talk about why most fitness professionals struggle with selling. Um, you know, bearing in mind that most of us, especially when I first got into the industry, I didn't really come into the fitness industry to sell or to market or to work in finance. I really got into it because I love empowering people in their health and fitness uh, and really helping people to achieve their goals um, and get to their finish lines and that's really why I got into it. It took me a long time to really get my head around the sales, the marketing, the finance and all those other pieces that really need to come into play in order for you to run a successful business and to really be successful and last longer than those 18 months that everyone keeps telling us is the kind of the life cycle of a fitness professional. Um, so why do most fitness professionals struggle with selling? Well usually because first of all you haven't been taught how to effectively communicate the value of your services. Um, your packaging services are based on an outdated model of sessions so you might be trying to sell 10 packs of personal training or um, 10 packs of group fitness. Um, generally where a lot of a, a fitness industry Professionals are coming into the industry and just using old models to package their services. So we're going to talk about that uh, in a little bit about what we deem to be the best way and most successful way to package and price. Or perhaps you struggle with valuing yourself and your time because you want to just help everyone you can. So you kind of undervalue your service so more people can use you and you get more business. But in doing so, you're not really setting yourself up for long-term success and really setting up the right kind of margins in your business to really survive long-term. So guys, what's your sales mindset? Um, too many people uh, are afraid of sales and I'd love a show of hands here of those in attendance. Please raise your hands if, if sales is something that you're nervous about or a little bit fearful of or perhaps just lacking a bit of confidence. Mark, David, Charlotte, yes, Peter, absolutely, um, Jenny, oh, I hope I said that right, Tasha, so quite a few of you in this group, probably about 50% of you, um, which is quite high and, and look, you have, you have reason to be, and a lot of it is just that we don't understand what we're selling, um, we don't quite understand the value of what it is that we provide and we're going to talk about that too, it's not just providing a personal training session or a group training session, we provide a lot more um, as practitioners. Sometimes it's around that used car salesman mentality, so um, perhaps thinking sales is a bit slimy. Maybe you've had um, you know, a bad experience when you've gone to a gym and, and their sales process and I've been pushy and so it's given you that kind of mentality that sales is a little bit slimy. Um, maybe you just don't understand what sales is all about. Uh, we're certainly going to help you with that very soon. Um, or that you don't yet understand that in fact it's your professional obligation to be good at sales. Uh, and we're going to talk about that a, later, a bit later on in the slides, but I really want you to remember that, uh, that one statement, that it is your professional obligation to be good at sales. Okay, we're going to talk about that really soon and give you some more context around that sentence. Um, maybe you're unable to close the deal. So perhaps you've got a negative mindset on taking money from people. Is that relevant to anyone here? Raise of hands. Uh, if you kind of feel a little bit nervous about asking for money, about you know when they're ready to, your client's ready to buy that next team pack or to commit to that that next session, that having that conversation around asking for that money fills you with nerves and dread. Um, yeah, definitely seeing a few hands pop up here. Mark, Charlotte, Peter, thanks so much. Shane, yeah, absolutely, I get it. I felt that way myself. Um, or perhaps there's just no sales process at the moment, so it's not something that you're thinking about. It's not really in your wheelhouse. 
podcast right now, you don't have that kind of set consultation process, or the training you've got hasn't quite equipped you for really running a repeatable, successful sales process that's going to work every time and fill you with confidence that um, you're going to be able to nail this and it's going to become a really kind of easy, uh, repeatable part of the business. So guys, what are you selling? Let's talk about that a little bit. Um, so it's really vital to understand what it is that you are selling, okay? And I don't want you guys to think that you're selling memberships, you're not selling training sessions, you're not selling contracts, and you're not selling community, okay? Look, these are all great things, absolutely, and they really are part of the overall uh, package of what we're delivering, but they are not what you're really selling. Uh, I don't ring up um, a gym, a personal trainer, etc., and say, hi there, I'm interested in buying a membership. Hi there, I'm interested in a contract. Or, hello, I'm interested in joining your community. Um, generally, I'm ringing for other reasons uh, that are linked to some other problems that I may have, and we are going to dig that in. But first of all, what are you selling? Okay, let me tell you. The first thing you are selling, guys, is solutions. We're not selling contracts, personal training sessions, community, you know, squat technique. We're selling solutions. All right, your prospects are looking for solutions to their problems or a path to achieve their goals. Yeah, your prospects are looking for solutions to their problems or a path to achieve their goals. Okay, really important by understanding. Uh, what they are really looking for, you can then show the prospect the solution that they need. Hopefully that makes sense. So when someone comes in uh, and starts to talk to you about their options, about their health and fitness, we're not selling them anything but a solution to their problems. Now it's really important that we have a process in place that we can really find out what those problems are so that we are able to um, advise on the best solution to solve that problem. And really if you can understand how to really get that out of a client and get a client talking about the real reason that they're talking to you right now, um, then you're really going to be able to offer the perfect solution for them that's tailored uh, and really gets them to buy from you at the end of the day. So hopefully that makes sense, guys. You are selling solutions to problems or paths to achieve a goal. So if I come to see you and I want to lose 10 kgs, that's not necessarily my problem. Yeah, My problem is what's going on behind the scenes, how's my mindset, how am I emotionally um, around that process. So if I want to lose 10 kgs, I'm probably feeling pretty self-conscious. Maybe I wake up in the morning, look in the mirror, and I just don't have any confidence. My social life is lacking. I'm not going out with my friends anymore. I can't keep up with my kids in the playground. You know, I can just get puffed. And, you know, they're the real problems that I have. It's not 10 kgs. It's the way having this extra 10 kgs makes me feel. It's the way it affects my day-to-day -day life. And it's a way, the way it affects the people around me. That's my problem, all right? And I'm going to teach you uh, in the coming slides how to really dig into that with a client and really get them out of that mindset of uh, my problem is I'm overweight and my problem is I'm not fit enough to really, really nailing in what the real problem is so that we, as practitioners, can provide the right solution to really solve that problem or the right pathway to achieve the goal. Uh, pathway to achieve a goal, it's a, bit, so it's a bit easier. So I'm coming in and I want to run a marathon, that's my goal, and as a um, qualified trainer, I want you to show me how to get there and to take me through that journey. So to provide that pathway to achieve my goal. Hands up if that makes sense to you guys, that we are selling solutions, we're not selling training or sessions or community or Facebook pages or perfect squat technique. We're selling solutions to problems and pathways to goals. All right, looks like I've got every single hand raised just about still a few of you, uh, maybe a bit nervous with the hand raises there, but it sounds like it's sinking in, so that's, that's awesome, we can move on. Guys, I want to now address mindset on value, so now we know what we're selling, we're selling solutions, but I want to really address, as I said, the value mindset, okay, which again is super important to really make sure we're setting ourselves up for So. When we talk about value on mindset, some of the things that come to mind is I wouldn't pay that much, or other trainers' facilities aren't charging that much, or even the statement, am I really worth that much? And we're using these as examples because as a coach, uh, I hear this a lot, especially when I'm talking to my, my clients and our members about how to price and how to structure. Um, this definitely comes out a lot. I wouldn't pay that much, uh, other trainers' facilities aren't charging that much, and am I really worth that much? Um, so I really want to attack that whole mindset on value right now. Does anyone on this call, and again, raise your hands, uh, does this kind of, do any of you hold this mindset currently of you feel like you're too expensive or you're scared to charge what you think you're worth because you're not sure if people will pay that much or you're comparing yourself to other trainers and other 
facilities and looking at what they charge, uh, and so you don't want to charge more than them, or maybe you're having some trouble with some self-worth and are just not sure and uh, not confident that you're really worth what you're asking for. Um, Cool, thanks Rebecca. Rebecca's got the question box now, putting a yes in there. Uh, Rebecca, let me know, is it is it one, two or three? Is it other trainers wouldn't pay that much? Uh, is it you, you wouldn't pay it or others aren't charging it or are you worth that much? Which one is kind of the one that, that sinks in for you? Mark's also saying that he's in a rural area, so costs are different to suburbs. Yeah, look, that's, that's quite right. There is a bit of a change in the market, depending on the area that you're in. But even if you're brand new to the industry, there's no reason why you shouldn't be charging out your services um, you know, at the same rates as some of those other hirings. Um, there's certainly no reason for you to go and undercut yourself just based on being in a rural area. Um, you know, People that are living in a rural area don't necessarily have less money than someone living in an urban area. Uh, it's just that we have to dig in a little bit more and build that need and build that value equation for that person in order to commit. And we're going to go through that a little bit more as well. Uh, and I hopefully I'm saying this right, Genio, absolutely new to starting a business and so confused what to charge. Yeah, look, that's that's totally common too as we're coming into the industry, whether it's as a business owner or a new trainer, uh, it's really hard to kind of see where I'm gonna where I'm gonna sit myself in the market. And a lot of people in the fitness industry will kind of price themselves in low so that they can get clients on board, uh, get bulk clients. But what that does is it kind of makes it really hard to increase your prices a little bit further down the track. And we're now kind of undercutting ourselves a little bit. Um, you know, if, uh, if I'm a new doctor uh, to the medical industry, I don't necessarily come in and charge less than a doctor who's been around for 10 years, um, you know, just because I'm a little bit newer. And that's a mindset that fitness professionals really need to get around, um, you know, and that we shouldn't compare ourselves to others. Uh, we still provide the same value. I'm still confident, Genio, that you will offer solutions to your clients and solve their problems, and that that's worth just as much as a trainer who's been around doing that for 20 years. Okay? If the problem is there and we can build the solution, uh, then we can certainly ask for what it is that we're worth. So thanks for the feedback there, guys. That's brilliant. So moving on, mindset around value, and again, some of you have just uh, let me know that that's a problem for you and that's something that you're struggling with, so let's tackle it. Um, so first one, I wouldn't pay that much, uh, and a lot of this comes with our own internal monologue and our own view uh, on money and on value. Um, I certainly, when I came into the industry, now tell you a little bit about my background. So I was brought up, um, my mother was a single parent. Um, she had three part-time jobs in order to kind of pay the way for myself and my two brothers. And when I grew up, money was hard to come by. And a lot of the time, uh, you know, I, I keep sort of hearing in my head my mother saying, it's too expensive or we can't afford it or we need to save our money and, and all these things. So my mindset on value became that money was hard to come by, there wasn't enough of it, um, and it needed to be held on to. So when I came to sort of looking at how much I charged people and the price of my service, you know, the thought of charging someone $80 to $100 for a personal training session to me seemed really expensive. So that was something that I really battled with. Um, but I, you know, I had to really understand that it doesn't matter what I would pay um, and that everyone has different priorities in terms of what they value. $80 to me is a little bit expensive, but to other people uh, it could be a total breeze. Um, and really it all comes down to what the problem is of the person that we're speaking of. Now if I was to say to you Alex Weeks, uh, if you were to come in and tell me that you wanted to lose um, 15 kgs and I said to you, great, Think about six months' time, um, you've lost that 15 kgs, how that would make you feel. And you would tell me that you'd feel awesome, uh, you'd feel so much better, you'd be more active. And if I said to you, great. Now, if I told you that to get to that result, it was going to cost you $500 or $600, you would probably value that as being a good deal. And you'd be like, that's, not, that's absolutely not a problem because the priorities that you have are a little different to what mine are. So we've got to sometimes really take ourselves out of that seat uh, and just treat the person without uh, our own misconceptions or preconceptions about value and understand that you know, what, I seem, what I deem to be expensive or cheap is totally different to what Tara or David or Charlotte might perceive to be expensive or, or cheap. So we've really got to make sure that we are taking all those ideas and thoughts out of this process because everybody has different priorities in terms of what they value. Uh, and again, we can't assume that people share the same as we do. So we really have to get ourselves around that. All right? If you were to tell me that uh, you could you know, turn me into a muscle man in six months and it was going to cost X amount, there's, you know, there's a pretty good case that that would be of high value or it could be of low value. So really it's, it's about making sure that you treat everybody as an individual and you're talking to them about their own value mindset and not bringing your own into the piece. 
continuing on from that, other trainers and facilities aren't charging that much. Yeah, so again, it doesn't matter what other people charge. Yeah, because your product price reflects your value and not theirs. Um, I put this question to you: Does Mercedes Benz care how much a Honda Civic costs? Okay, really important question. Does Mercedes Benz care how much a Honda Civic costs? And I'll answer that for you: No, absolutely not. Mercedes Benz want to be more expensive than Honda. Simple as that, because if I was to look at a Mercedes-Benz and see the price tag on the window is 60000 and then look at a Honda Civic and see that the price tag on the window is 30000 let me know in the question box, guys, what is going to be perceived as being the best car? Is it going to be the Mercedes or is it going to be the Honda? Um, and that's really important. Yeah, Jason's saying the Merc. Absolutely. It's really, really simple. Merc don't want to be classed as a Honda. They want to be seen as higher end. They want to be seen as more, be seen as more expensive because, you know, when we're looking at it, the perceived value is that it is of higher value. It is a better product based on that pricing. Uh, and it's the same thing when we're comparing ourselves to um, other trainers, other businesses, etc. We don't want to just price ourselves less for the sake of being more affordable. What we're telling people is that uh, our value is not as high as our opposition. Yeah, and we certainly don't want to be giving that, uh, giving that impression. I can give you another quick uh, example of my own. When I did come into the industry, uh, when I was pretty early on, I, I joined a new gym um, where I was working out of uh, as a contractor. And all these new trainers uh, and all the trainers that worked in the gym had their profiles on the wall. Uh, and I went through each profile and had a look while the, the gym owner was showing me around. And he said to me, look, Tom, you're going to have to create a profile from this wall. You could cool to do that? Yep, no problem. And I was going through and I saw, you know, there was Dave and Dave was charging you know, he was, he was 15 years in the industry, you know, Cert 3 and 4, um, had all these certifications, nutrition, you know, focused on weight loss and strength and charged $70 an hour. And then there was Jane, and Jane had four years in the industry, you know, specialized in weight loss, $75 an hour. And then there was Jeff, and you know, la la la, and he was $75 an hour. So what did I do? I put myself in there, Tom, two years in the industry, I do this, 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 $85 an hour. Um, so I actually priced myself more expensive than the other trainers in the facility. Uh, and actually, the, the trainers, when I first came in and did this, looked at me like, you know, who's this smarty pants? Uh, what does this guy think he's doing, pricing himself up there? He's never going to get me business. But as new people came into the gym and were going through the profiles, and oh, yeah, there's Dave, and there's Jane, and la, 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 and there's Tom, $85 an hour, and all these others are 75 who do you think they were signing up with to, uh, to personal train? Give me a clue. It wasn't Dave. It wasn't Jane. It was me because they were looking at the pricing and then they were seeing me at $85 and obviously uh, saw me as being better value. I was priced higher. I was obviously better quality. Maybe I got better results. Whatever it was, I started getting all the business. And it wasn't long before Dave and Jane started putting their prices up accordingly uh, and bringing them in line with me so that they were seen as being just the same in terms of value. So what did I do? Up I went another few dollars. Um, so being the most expensive does not necessarily mean you're going to get less business. In most cases, you're going to be seen as being better value, higher quality product. You're going to be the Mercedes Benz. And we want to be the Mercedes Benz and not the Honda, uh, and we're going to touch on some more value pieces very soon. Continuing on with that third piece, am I really worth that much? Guys, I want you to raise your hands um, if you believe in your ability to produce results in your clients. Raise your hands if you believe that you can help your clients to solve their problems and achieve their goals. And don't be shy. Back yourselves. Let's see a show of hands. I should be seeing a whole lot more. I've got a few. I've got maybe 10 or 15. Uh, I'm hoping that all of you uh, certainly believe in your ability to produce results for your clients or have produced results for your clients in the past. Because if you can do that, then guess what? You are really worth that much. It's simple. Can you put a price on giving people their lives back? Yeah? Because the answer is no. If I came to you and I want to lose 30 kgs because I'm so immobile, uh, I'm in constant pain in my back, you know, my legs hurt, I don't have the energy, cardiovascular system's not good, uh, I've got all these problems, and you're able to solve that for me, then you can't put a price on that. You know, if you can do that for your clients, that's almost priceless. You're giving someone back their lives. So yes, you are absolutely worth that much. You, your goals, and those that depend on you really are worth that much. Now, Charlotte, um, making a comment here, I don't have a lot of experience, so I'm not sure about producing results, but I believe I can put a really good, varied, and fun program together. Charlotte, if you can do that, if you can put a very fun, tailored program together for your client and keep them engaged, working out and going through the process and eating well, if you can provide that, you're going to get the result for the client. 
all right? Remember, the clients are coming to you because they don't know how to do this themselves. So you're really becoming their teacher and their educator. If you can do that in a way that they get results, then guess what? You are really worth that much. And it doesn't matter if you've got a lot of experience or if you've you know, got no experience at all. If you can keep your clients engaged, provide a solution to their problem, and then help them to walk through that and help them on their journey, they're going to get results and you're going to be absolutely worth it, all right? So bear that in mind, Charlotte. Charlotte Hanson, you are worth that much. Now go out there and get it done. All right, so let's move on. Hopefully that's helped just address the mindset for you guys. Uh, and look, it's really common when you first um, enter the fitness industry or you're new to the industry to kind of struggle with this a little bit. Um, but guess what, guys? You know, you are absolutely worth it. I've been doing this for a long, long time. You're worth just as much as me. You provide the same solutions and the same pathways to goals for clients. You're going to get results just like I did. So there's no reason for you to price yourself less than what I am um, just based on being slightly new to the industry. All right, so we're getting our pricing sorted. We're starting to understand that we are worth that much and it's okay to ask all right for what you are worth let's talk about the sales process a little bit more so as I mentioned earlier when you think about sales what comes to mind raise your hands if any of these come to mind slimy uh, manipulating high pressure or that used car salesman type scenario so ponder on that for a little bit and think about do you hold this opinion because of your experience with people selling to you or do you feel slimy when you're selling, because it's two very different things. Um, so Leone is saying high pressure, that kind of resonates with you a little bit. And again, it shouldn't have to be a high pressure environment where you shouldn't be needing to put any pressure on clients to sign up to your services and join you uh, or to train with you. But maybe you've felt uh, in the past as you've gone into fitness facilities, uh, maybe looked around gyms and looked at memberships that you've been pressured into sales. And a lot of the people that you talk to when you are going through a consultation process have probably been through a similar situation. So maybe they think it's slimy, manipulative, high pressure. So we really, really want to we want to break down those barriers a little bit and show these prospects that it doesn't have to be that way. That we're really not here to sell; we're here to solve. Uh, we're not here to pitch; we're here to educate. Uh, and we're going to go through that a little bit more. So it's really time to change the paradigm. Not only yours uh, as a fitness industry practitioner who needs to get clients on board and make sales, you know, we want to make sure we change your paradigm. It shouldn't be slimy, manipulating, high pressure, or a used car scenario. And you shouldn't think like that. Um, so we're going to go through uh, and let you know a little bit more and give you some more insight into the sales process, what it's for, what it means, and how you can really take all these kind of slimy, manipulate, all these mindsets really out of the process uh, and just make it a process that works for you, works for your prospects, and sets you up for success in business and sets your prospects up for success to achieve their goals and solve their problems okay um, Shane's got a, a great question here uh, I'm gonna leave it to a little bit later but where do you draw the line before being seen as being too pushy um, Shane hang in there because as we go through the sales process now and, and we kind of break down uh, each of the points of the sales process you're gonna see that you don't have to be pushy um, you don't have to kind of force anyone or, or put the hard word on because if you you know play by the rules and, and, and complete the sales process as we're about to show you, they're going to want to sign up. It's not going to be a matter of pushing them into it. They're either going to be right for your business or they're not. You're either going to be the right solution for them or you're not, and they're either going to be the right client for you or they're not. Uh, simple as that. So you shouldn't have to push. If they're the right client for you, they will join. Simple as that. So let's have a look at what is the sales process. So as I mentioned before, the sales process is an education process. Yeah, This is not come into my office, I'm going to do all I can to make you sign the dotted line. If that is your mindset, you're not going to succeed. We're in the, the industry of providing solutions. This is a service industry where we have to put our people first. Uh, and putting them in an office and putting the pushy hard sales line on them is not the best way to start that relationship. Um, it's an education process, guys. If people knew how to get the results they were looking for, they wouldn't need us. You know, simple as that. If they knew how to lose the weight, if they knew how to eat right, if they knew how to gain muscle, if they knew how to improve cardiovascular fitness, whatever, they wouldn't need you. So first of all, we need to teach them a little bit about how um, we are best positioned to help them to learn that. If people knew what made one gym or what trainer or one trainer better than another, they also wouldn't need us. If they already knew, oh, that's what makes a great trainer, then they'd just go to that trainer. They wouldn't be sitting there talking to you about how you can provide services to them and what solutions you can offer. Um, the sales process is your opportunity to educate people on what they need to do to accomplish their goals and how you are best positioned to help them. Okay, I'll say that one again. The sales process is your opportunity to educate people on what they need to do to accomplish their goals and then how you are best positioned to help them. All right, simple as that. Selling is serving, guys. All right, really important. If you are able to sell someone into your business, 
you now have the chance to help them change their life. Yeah? By educating them, you're providing a valuable service whether they buy from you or not. Got it? So first point, if you're able to sell someone into your business, you now have the chance to help them change their life. Awesome. If someone decides to train with you and that you're the perfect personal trainer for them, fantastic. You now get to work one-on-one -on -one with that person to really provide amazing value and in some cases, and in most cases in fact, change their life. There's nothing more awesome than that. That is why we got into the game in the first place, because we want to better people's lives. We want them to achieve their goals. We want to provide solutions to their problems. That's why we're here. That's why we're doing it. And the biggest wins that you are going to have as a trainer are really going to be tied in with the biggest wins that your clients have. All right? By educating them you know, during this process, this consultation process, you're providing them a real valuable service whether they buy from you or not. And as you see, as we go through the sales, the sales process, um, that's really what it's all about. Uh, it's about providing value, letting them know, and helping them out to discover what their real problems are and then let them know what the potential solutions are. And if they decide that you're not the right fit for them or your gym's not quite the right place for them or whatever, and they decide not to buy from you, that's okay. You've actually added them, added so much value to them by telling them about health and fitness and about what you do that you've now given them a better idea as to what they're really looking for. So, um, you know, really important that we don't beat ourselves up over all, all the time of, of losing a sale because it's not the worst thing that can happen. In fact, just having that consultation with the person has already added value to them uh, in one way or another. It is your professional obligation, really important. Um, it is your professional obligation to have a really great consultation process. Um, and what happens if you don't embrace this process and don't work to improve your sales process? Simple. Your business will decline. Without a great sales process or consultation process, you won't make sales, so business is going to decline. And you'll also be failing the very people that you want to help. Yeah? So everyone that walks out the door, unfortunately, you don't get to help that person. Okay? And that's a real shame. So we want to make sure that you are positioning yourself uh, in the best way to help the people that you really want to help. I'm not saying we have to close every single sale because some people that we speak to aren't going to be the right fit for us and for our business. Um, and that's okay. That's okay to tell them, look, I don't know if I'm the right fit for you as a trainer. You know, I suggest that you go down and you talk to such and such down the road because they're going to provide a better solution for you. We can't kind of be everything to everybody. Um, we are going to meet with people that aren't the right fit for us and that's okay. It's okay to tell people that maybe that you're not the right, the right option or the best fit. It's also your professional obligation um, to make sure that if you are selling that person and you are bringing that person on board, that you are actually the right person to help them out um, and help them with their goals. As I said, guys, every time you lose a sale, you've lost the chance to change someone's life. If they don't buy from you, there is always that chance that they'll end up with a subpar training experience and not get the results they're looking for. So if you do, if they are, if they do decide that you're not the right person or you're not the right fit for them, make sure that you do have somewhere to be able to refer them on to. Um, don't just let them go and join a horrible big box gym that's going to treat them like a number and they're not going to get their results and they're going to have a terrible experience and never want to work out again. Um, you owe it to your prospects to have this great sales system. Yeah. Let's just tackle the I can't take money. So in our society, money can take on a very negative connotation. Um, and sometimes we feel like we're not serving our clients as well as we could be if we're not giving them a discount. Uh, raise of hands, um, who here gives out discounts here, there, and kind of prices things based on what they perceive to be affordable for their clients. And even though they normally charge $60 a session, sometimes we'll say, oh, it's $50 just because you're not confident with throwing out what the real price is. Yeah, there's a few of you popping up. Or, you know, you give discounts to your friends um, and all that. You sort of feel like, oh, I'll be do really doing this person a favor if I make this is cheaper and more affordable for them. Uh, definitely a few hands coming up. Look, that's great for the prospect. That's great for the new client. But is that good for you? Is that good for your business? You know, those of you on the on the call now that have children, is that the best the best thing for your family? Uh, is that the best thing for you to really achieve those goals that you have in business uh, and in your personal life? No, probably not. And there's a few of you that are that are mentioning too many discounts for friends. Yep, absolutely. Uh, Charlotte sometimes and Rebecca, unfortunately, yes. Yeah, we don't have to discount our friends. In fact, our friends should be the ones that want to pay the full price because they want to support our personal life and our business goals. Um, but often we do resort to just giving that discount so that we feel better about asking um, for the money. So the, the question is, you know, wouldn't I help them more if I charge less? No, uh, because you actually need your clients to commit financially in order for them to really buy in and be accountable. Um, you know, If you charge me $10 for a session or $10 a week for my membership, if I miss a couple of sessions, who cares? It's only 10 bucks. If you're charging me 50 then I don't want to waste $50, so there's probably much more of a chance that I'm going to turn up for that session. Um, so really, you're doing yourself and your clients a disservice by cheapening your services and not asking for what you're worth. Um, 
So I said, the more committed your clients are to their goals and your programs and have skin in the game, the more likely they are, will be motivated to stick with it. And if you do have that discount kind of scenario going on, then I need you to reset your relationship with money. All right? Uh, really, you're in business because you've got your own goals, you've got your own dreams. Yes, your client has theirs, but you need to make sure that you're bringing enough in to sustain your dreams and to sustain your vision and to make sure that you're really building your business uh, successfully moving forward. So you need a sales process, guys. I'm sure you've picked up on that based on what I've talked about. You can't just wing it. Um, the lack of a formal sales process is the first step towards failure in business. Without a process, there's no consistency or scalability. Uh, and process provides framework and confidence. So, you know, it's just like an actor, they have a script, they go and learn that script, they go in and they nail that scene. If you said action, uh, we're doing an action movie, go, and you just let the actor make it up on the spot, you're probably going to get a pretty subpar movie. It's going to be on the B grade somewhere, uh, straight to DVD. So it's all about having that framework to give you that confidence in the play. Uh, that confidence when you're rolling it out. So the right process ensures you get the information you need from a prospect so that you can present them with the solutions that they are looking for. Again, if you really dive into the needs of the prospect, you can provide the right solution for them. And if you're providing the right solution, there's no reason why they're not going to want to buy it. Let's just touch a little bit on the best packaging um, that we've ever tested um, here at MPE. And this is what we suggest most of our clients set their business up with. Um, so as you can see, we've got programs on the left, totally committed, committed, and sort of committed. Now these programs are based on the commitment, uh, whether it's a 12 month, six month, or three month commitment. Now, just really quickly, I want to mention, commitment is not about bringing a client in and signing them up long term and really locking them into a contract and that kind of thing. And that is the mindset around it uh, a lot of the time. Commitment does, does a number of things. Uh, first and foremost, commitment is, really enables you to forecast your business performance in the future. So if I bring on the client for a 10-pack or a once a week or they pay as you go, it's really hard for me to know whether that client's going to be paying me next week or next month. And so I can't forecast what the success of my business is going to be in three months' time, for example. Um, so it really enables me, if I know that person's coming into my business is, is committed to paying X amount for the next six months, then I can sort of see what my business is going to be performing like in six months' time. Hopefully that makes sense. Also. If I come to you, say if I come to um, Stephen, uh, and I come in and I've got, uh, my problem is that I need to lose 15 kgs to feel better about myself and to feel more confident. If I need to lose 15 kgs, is a three month commitment gonna do the job? Raise your hand if you think a three month commitment is all I'm gonna need to lose 15 kgs. No hands coming up, <laughs> dead right. Uh, you're actually doing me a disservice. If I tell you I wanna lose 15 kgs and you go, great, you should sign up for three months. At the end of that three months, that's not gonna provide the solution that I, I'm not going to lose 15 kgs in that time, like, let's be honest. I'd have to be a freak if I did so. Um, so you're actually doing me a disservice by underselling me. You're also doing me a disservice by saying, oh yeah, look, let's just commit, um, you know, come in week by week, you know, just pay as you go. That's not going to enable me to lose 15 kgs. So commitment is all about letting your client know that, look, if you want to lose 50 kgs, it's going to take 12 months. You know, you're going to have to commit for a long term. If you're really serious about getting these results, then you're going to have to commit. Simple as that. Um, so that's how we kind of do it. We also um, suggest that you do it sessions per week. So, um, you know, if you come in and you train with me, uh, you've got three, six, 12 month options, and you're either going to commit to two, three, four sessions per week. You probably have a lot of clients right now doing one session per week and probably not getting the results that they're wanting. Uh, because, you know, as we know, one session a week is generally not enough, especially if you're not doing anything in between times. So if your clients are really committed to achieving a goal, um, then they're gonna have to commit to two, three, four sessions per week. Uh, and that is how we would generally want our clients to package and price. Now the monthly investment obviously changes depending on the term and how many sessions per week. Um, and again, uh, you'll see at the end I'm going to give you a link to grab some handouts and download some information which is going to talk a little bit more about pricing and packaging. Um, hands up if you are doing something similar to this uh, pricing and pa packaging structure right now for personal training in particular. Great, a few hands coming up, that's awesome to see. Good, so you're getting good committed clients into your business and giving you the best chance to make a change, which is great, and change their lives. Rebecca's saying, no, but I should be. Rebecca, you're darn right, you should be. Um, so look, uh, I'm gonna share a link with you guys a little bit later to download some tools to help you with setting this up and getting some mindset and some ideas around pricing and packaging. So, uh, and David, I'm embarrassed to say I'm selling six and 12 packs and pay as you go. 
David, it's time to change your mindset, my man. It's time to work with a more committed client who's willing to commit to you, um, commit to your business, and commit to their own results. And again, um, look for those downloads when, uh, when I share the link a little bit later on. There's going to be some stuff in there to really help. Let's go through uh, quickly because I, I tend to talk and we're running a little bit short on time, but I want to go through uh, and just talk about the different sales steps really briefly um, that we need to go through in a consult. And then at the end, there's uh, a booklet for you guys to download, which is really going to help you with this. So the first one is step, we call it 0 0.5, and we call our auto closer sales system a 7.5 step system. The prequel is a 0 0.5 because it happens before the consult, uh, and is a really hugely important part of the process. So let's say your lead comes in, the prequel really enables you to sift and sort through your leads um, that you receive. So by pre calling it enables you to work with the clients that you want to work with by having that phone conversation first and kind of pre calling them in or out. Um, and it helps to really guard and protect your time, which is super important. The things that we want to ask during a pre call for example, would be, um, you know, things like what are you, what are you trying to achieve? Um, we, we want to generally give an indication of our pricing, so look, our prices start at $60 per session and go right up to $180 a week. Is this within your budget? Um, and generally things like, are you the, the decision maker, for example? So there's things that we definitely want to ask throughout the prequel, and again, this is in some of the downloads later, which are really going to ensure that by the time you book someone in for a consult, you're actually talking to a qualified lead who is generally ready to buy and solve their problem. Um, a lot of the time, especially if you're online advertised through Facebook, you'll get people come through that aren't necessarily ready to go and ready to buy. Um, so the prequel really enables you to um, qualify them in or out, depending on how the conversation goes. From there, um, let's say we bring them in and we book them in for a consult and they roll on up. Um, it's time to kind of build that rapport. First thing we want to do is find common ground, okay, and make sure that we're uh, enabling the prospect to really feel comfortable. We want to get them talking a little bit, so it can be simple as, how's your day going today, you know, how did you get here, how did you hear about us, whatever, just some really easy questions to kind of get them uh, yesing and knowing. Um, we want to make sure that they, you know, that they like you because people buy from people they know, like, and trust. Simple as that. So if you are, you know, if you are consulting someone, make sure you do spend a few minutes before the consult to kind of get your game face on, get in the zone, and when they arrive, please make sure you smile uh, because nobody wants to roll up to meet a new potential personal trainer to have some grumpy dude or grumpy lady who's been up since 5 a.m. and just wants to have a snooze and hasn't had their protein shake and feels rubbish. You've got to have your game face on, put a smile on your dial, uh, and really set yourself up for a nice, comfortable interaction with this prospect as they arrive. The next step is step two, which is our probe and discovery. Uh, and you can see that what's consistent, what is consistent with all open-ended questions, Simple, it's the what, where, when, why, and how. We want to start asking, uh, once we've sat the person down and we've begun the consult process, we want to start asking some open-ended questions to really get the prospect talking. And that's going to really enable us to figure out what the real pain points are and what really brings them in today. Um, some of the questions, uh, the top three that we've identified to ask the prospect when they arrive, and again, don't worry about taking notes madly. This is in the handouts, which you guys are going to be, have access to later on. Uh, tell me a little bit about your health and fitness goals. And again, um, we want to make sure we drill down by asking why the goals are important to you. And we're drilling down to the emotional reasons why. Not just, oh, I just want to feel better, or I just want to look great in the bikini, or summer's coming and it's time to get buff. It's kind of like, all right, even the guy who says, I just want to put on some muscle, there's a reason why. He's generally feeling like uh, maybe he's feeling self-conscious because all his buddies are muscly and he feels like the runt of the litter or whatever it may be. There's always emotional reasons as to why. Okay, So we really want to drill down to the emotions behind uh, what's going on here. So if I come to you, I want to lose some weight. Don't leave it there. Oh, great. I can help you out with some cardio. You really want to find out why. Okay, well, how does having those extra kgs make you feel right now? Uh, and really dive into the emotion. Once I'm feeling a bit upset and I'm well aware of the emotion, you can ask me for the commitment. Yeah, And so with commitment, we want to straight out ask, how committed are you, Tom, to achieving your goal? How committed are you to losing this weight, to feeling better in the morning, to keeping up with your kids, to having your confidence back? How committed are you to that? And I'm generally, you're going to want me to say I'm a 10. Uh, 8, 9, 10 is great. If I say, oh, look, I'm a 10 out of 10, I'm so committed, or I'm a 9, or I'm an 8, that's cool, we can move on. But if I say, oh, I'm about a 6, then you've not spent the right amount of time to really dig into the emotion behind it, and I'm not going to buy into the solution. All right, so spend some more time diving in. If you say to me, how committed are you, Tom, and I go, I'm a 5, then I'm still not quite there. You haven't built the need. I'm not aware of the emotion that I'm feeling around wanting to lose weight or gain muscle or cardio or whatever. 
So keep diving in until you get that commitment. And then ask again, so how are you feeling now in terms of commitment? Oh, I'm a 10 now, you've really dug in, let's go. Like, how do I do this? So help me solve my problem. And from there we're going into the identifying the need. So this is about relating it back to me. Um, and this is all about knowing the clients better than they know themselves. And you might need to use some language like, okay, so Tom, you've told me you want to lose five kgs and I can only imagine how you feel by having that extra weight. Like, are you feeling self-conscious, Tom? You know, how do you feel when you wake up in the morning and look in the mirror? What's your social life like? You know, um, How's your love life if you want to dig in that deep, you know? But it's really about getting to know the clients better than they know themselves and doing that, enabling them to know themselves better. So really bringing out those emotional needs and bringing them right to the front. Um, you know, if the client sheds a tear or two, you're probably doing a great job. We don't necessarily want our prospects to cry, uh, but if you're really enabling them to connect with your emotion, then they're really going to want to buy into the solution that you provide. Again, we're building that problem as step four. So as I said, bringing those needs to the surface, helping them understand that they have a problem. And this is the most critical step in making the sale. So if I'm at the stage where, oh my goodness, you know, you've really helped me to identify how I'm really feeling right now based on my weight, my weight loss goals. You know, I've got all these problems that need solving, my health's an issue of diabetes, all that kind of stuff. Um, if you can really help me to understand that problem, then as I said, the solution is going to be exactly what I'm looking for. I'm going to be dying for you to tell me uh, how to solve this problem. Yeah? Cool, so moving on. Um, I want to say that without needs, there are no solutions, all right? and without solutions, it's virtually impossible to establish a value. Yeah, that's a quote from uh, Question Based Selling, which is a really great book from Thomas Fries. Um, so feel free to look that one up. Without needs, there are no solutions. If you don't establish that needs, you can't solve the problem. Without being able to solve the problem, you're definitely not going to be able to portray your value. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Um, so Charlotte's just saying this is really great, but you have to go and teach groups. Okay, oh, you got to roll out, no problem. And it's being recorded, Charlotte. Don't worry about that. Uh, and again, uh, hopefully the the link will be shared with you later on, so you can download the tools behind that. So thanks very much for being here. Go and kill and nail that session. Uh, moving on, so from there we've established the need, we've established the emotional need, and now we present our solution. And we always say that we want you to show your prospect how your product or service will solve their problem. Okay, That's really important. You've addressed that they've got problems, you've identified them and brought them to the surface. Now we're going to tailor our presentation to really solving their problem and letting them know how we do that. We always want you to use a visual format to your presentation. So you can see from the example here, um, we use PowerPoint generally with most of our clients. So we have the five steps to achieving your health and fitness goals, and we'll take the client through it. And we do this because visual presentations increase comprehension by 400%. So by having this PowerPoint presentation with a, this is how we work with our clients, this is how we keep you accountable, this is the services we provide, right down to here's our pricing and packaging, etc. cetera, um, that's gonna really give you a great, great basis in order to present with confidence because now you've got the script to go by in the presentation um, to use step by step and again more details um, to this around this in the handout. Additional key elements of a good presentation, guys, is social proof and stories. So client testimonials before and afters and using those in your presentation because it's one thing to show people and to tell clients that we can solve their problem, but we need to have examples of where we have done that. Shane, thanks for your message. Understand you've got to go. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day and thanks for being on here. Uh, from there, we've got our risk reversal. So a lot of the time we will offer a money back guarantee. So if you follow my programs 100%, if you stick to the nutrition plan, if you record and log your nutrition and fitness and you don't get the result you're looking for, I'll give you your money back. And I know for a fact that if you want to lose 5 kgs and I write you a program and you do everything that I tell you to do, um, you're going to get that result. So I can obviously present that risk reversal with confidence. Um, we want you to make the prospect feel important like they're the only one in the room, so don't consult them in the middle of the gym what's going on. Make sure you go somewhere nice and quiet where it can just be you and the prospect and you can really nail down and get them to open up. And then we want you to reassure them with confidence that you have what they want and need to solve their problems and achieve their goals. Simple. Position yourself as the best person to help them moving forward. Uh, just on a side note, um, I've gone a little bit over time. I've got just a couple more minutes to get through uh, and then hopefully we'll have a little bit of time for a little bit of Q&A at the end. So just letting uh, those of you that need to know, know that, I warned you. <laughs> moving forward after we're presented, it's time to close the sale. All right. Now, I want you guys to realize that closing is not something you do to someone. All right. We're not closing them, locking them in, getting them signed up. Take that language out of your vocabulary. That's not what we're doing. We're offering an opportunity to your prospect to solve their problem. It's simple. It's like, 
Shane, I've listened to you. I understand you've got some problems and there's a lot of emotional things that are going on behind the scenes that relate directly to your weight right now. I'm now going to present you the solution to solve that problem. Simple as that. I'm not closing you. Here's the solution to the problem. This is what you need to do to solve it. Does that sound like something you're interested in? Simple as that. So uh, the question that came forward earlier about being pushy, we shouldn't need to be pushy. If, we've, if we know the problem, we've got the solution, we present the solution, it's either going to work or it's not. Simple as that. If it doesn't work, if it's not the right solution, maybe we haven't listened to the client properly, maybe we haven't really locked into the emotional, maybe we haven't build, built the commitment yet. But generally, uh, if we can solve the problem, if we identify that, we're going to get the sale. Make your client or your prospect feel comfortable with saying yes. Simple as that. Yes is fine. No is fine too, but make them feel comfortable with saying yes and answering questions. It's going to be really important when it comes to closing. And then present an alternative choice for your prospect so that you can ask them which they would prefer. So look, you know, Steve, based on your goal of wanting to lose 5 kgs, my suggestion was, would be that you commit to a six-month program with me, training three times a week. That's really going to make sure that you solve the problem. Now, if you are a little bit under time constraint, then I still think you should commit for six months, but maybe look at doing two a week, but I will ask you to complete a workout on your own in between those sessions to ensure that you're really doing enough work to hit that goal. Which would you prefer? Simple. You know, we're given two great choices that are going to solve the problem, and now the prospect gets to decide which one is right for them. Just quickly on objection handling at the end, because again, uh, this is something that you're probably going to come up against. Um, follow a structured process is really important. Now, if you have completed all of the steps up until this point, you know, as well as you should have, uh, and practiced them and absolutely nailed it, um, then you shouldn't get too many objections at the end. But if you do, listen. And never interrupt, all right? You listen first. People are talking to you because they want to be listened. Then question the objection to really flush out if that is the real problem. So say the objection is price. Uh, I would say, great, Steve, look, I understand that you've got a little bit of concern around the pricing right now. Um, is that the only, the only thing that's standing in the way of you wanting to start this program and solve your problems right now? He says, yes. Great. Now we're going to answer the objection, and generally we're going to, that's going to be about going back into that emotional knees. Look, Steve, you told me how you feel in the morning when you wake up and that you can't go with the kids and, and all these problems. You know, Are you really going to let $60 a week get in the way of you achieving your goal? I mean, if I was to tell you that in six months you've lost that weight, you're keeping up with the kids, you feel great in the morning, you're going out more, your love life's increased, and that cost you $60 a week, is that going to seem worth it to you? He's going to be like, yep, it sure does. Okay, great. So really, you know, after speaking this in a little bit more detail, Steve, what you're saying is that $60 is worth it to you now and you do see that as being valuable. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Great. Awesome. We've got over that objection. Okay, Steve, so based on that, are you ready to commit? Let's get into it. Would you like to do three sessions a week or two sessions a week with one on your own? So we're making sure that we're asking for that sale again once we've removed the objection. Don't remove the objection and then not ask for the, for the sale again because uh, you're really doing yourself a disservice. So be confident that once that objection is removed that you can then ask for that commitment again from Steve. Steve, it's time to solve your problem. Cool. Um, just being asked quickly by Rebecca, I'm passionate about injury rehab, not weight loss. Can you please provide an example of how I phrase a question? I'll do that in a second when we do a little bit of Q&A at the end, Rebecca. Uh, absolutely. So let's go over those steps again real quick before I kind of wrap up. Um, Pre-qualification is your first step. Step 0 0.5 about making sure that you're bringing the right people in for a consult. We then build the report. We go through probing and discovery questions to see what the history is for this particular prospect with health and fitness. We identify their needs and in doing that, the real needs, not losing weight, but what's the real need that this person has that brought them in today problem building, so really making sure that those needs are brought to the surface and we've built that problem enough that there really is a, a need to solve it. We've presented our solutions using that PowerPoint presentation, uh, and again, super important that you get a presentation on because the visual stuff is really easy and it gives you a script in which to move and go by. Um, from there, we've closed the deal, uh, offered the package, offered the pricing, etc., and got them started. Uh, or we've handled the objection and managed to close. Uh, if you follow these points in the sales system, you just cannot fail. Like People are going to be banging on the door ready to sign up. If you establish the needs, present the solution, uh, and different alternatives as to how to solve that problem, you're going to get it. Um, so again, I'm going to share a link with you very soon to download uh, a little bit more information about our auto-closer sales system so you guys can really start to put the system in place 
and get nine out of ten people signing up. All right, we want ten out of ten people really, but we'll promise you nine. Uh, if you do follow the system, you're going to find uh, your sales system just gets better and better, and you get the chance to solve more problems and change more lives. And that's what we're all about. Um, really quickly, I was going to share a couple of examples of clients of ours and AP who have put in the system and the amazing results they've got. Uh, I'm running out of time, so I'm just going to cruise through them real quick. But trust me, uh, follow the instructions, implement a great sales process that adds value to the clients as you consult them, and you will win. All right, simple as that. You're going to close sales and change lives. As I mentioned, guys, my gift to you. Uh, if you want some of our best reports on sales, marketing, goal setting, and more, um, we can deliver those directly to your inbox. Uh, all you need to do is visit www.netprofitexplosion.com forward slash FA for Fitness Australia. Uh, enter your email, name, etc., and we'll throw these straight into your inbox. Uh, we've got our advanced fitness sales system, so uh, how to better implement the sales process I was just speaking of. We've got nine proven marketing systems that you can use in your business to grow. Knowing your client and understanding who your best client is and how to attract them. Um, 17 point fitness business goal setting. There's heaps of awesome tools there. So, guys, open up uh, a new browser right now. Type it in netprofitexplosion.com forward slash FA. Get yourself these tools. Um, start to learn them and set yourselves up uh, to win more sales, get more clients, and change more lives. That is all I am going to talk to you guys about today. Um, I'm going to pass it back to Tom now, and uh, he can uh, he can wrap up. And then maybe if we have a little bit of time uh, to do a couple of minutes of Q and A after that, uh, then we can certainly cover that. But Tom, I'll let you be the judge, considering I talk way too much. So guys, thanks for your attention. Thanks for listening. I hope you've all got a little bit of value out of this uh, and have taken some learnings that you can go in action right now uh, in your own businesses, um, so that you guys even more, start to really make a change in people's lives and bring more and more clients on that you can add value to and just crush it in the fitness industry. So thanks a lot for your attention and participation. And Tom, I'm going to pass it back to you.